The Tana River Delta is a vast seasonal wetland complex. Its habitats, wildlife and people have adapted their lives to the extremes of drought and flood. The seasons themselves vary dramatically from year to year. A series of drought years in which ponds dry up and the grasslands are eaten bare may be followed by a great flood, such as the 1997-1998 El Nino floods that washed away the Tamak Road, destroyed the irrigation dikes and filled the delta south of the river with three meters of water. The narrative that dominates the conversation around the Tana Delta has over the years focused on either the conflicts that have occurred or the commercial potential of this land. Indeed, the Tana Delta is often referred to as virgin land, that the trees in the forest represent an opportunity that is yet to be exploited. This makes the case for protection of this area even more urgent. The people of Tana Delta have adapted their lives to seasonal extremes. Nearly 93% of the people live in rural areas and practice crop farming, livestock keeping and fishing. When the wetlands are left undisturbed, they act like sponges absorbing floods, storing the water and remaining green during the dry season. In times of drought, pastoralists bring livestock from as far as the Somali and Ethiopian border to graze on the grasslands. In times of flood, the delta fills with water and the water birds from all over Kenya nest and raise their young, replenishing bird populations throughout the country. These communities have made their lives around this natural wonder. They respect the relationship that has formed the delta, the deposit of silt and minerals that enrich the soil that ultimately sustains them. This area serves more than 80,000 people who depend on the services that this ecosystem provides. The people have always known the value of the Tana Delta, but uh, we have come in to encourage them and to help them in advocacy so that they can live sustainably in the Delta. The month of August in the year 2010, the community in the Delta came together in a powerful way. Article 42 of the Constitution provides the right of every person to a clean and healthy environment, which includes the right to have the environment protected for the benefit of present and future generations. On this basis, persons representing farmers, fishermen, pastoralists and conservation groups in the Delta went to court seeking to halt large-scale commercial developments in the Tana Delta until a master plan was in place. Sisi tuliwapeleka kotini hususan unajua rasilimali kuu ya mwananchi hapa duniani ni ardhi. Na tulipendekeza kwamba hii ardhi tuwe tunaimiliki sisi wenyewe na ile miradi ikija tukitekeleza sisi community tuwe wa kwanza wenye kufaidi. Sio kuletewa miradi alafu sisi tunakuwa squatters katika nchi yetu. The High Court ruling made by Lady Justice Mumbi Ngugi granted the local communities a voice to the development of the Tana Delta. Judge Ngugi ruled that the short, medium and long-range land use development plans for the Tana Delta would have to be development with full participation of the communities as well as government agencies and other stakeholders with an interest in the area. This ruling is indeed a victory, but people are still worried. The community leaders, for instance, are still waiting to see changes in light of the decision of the courts on the ground. An inter-ethnic conflict rocked the Tana Delta from August 2012 to January 2013. This event shook the entire country as almost 200 people lost their lives. In May 2013, the Commission of Inquiry into this listed the fact that the conflict over water and land resources was a major cause. Nature Kenya decided to run a humanitarian campaign to assist the victims of recent ethnic violence through provision of basic food items. In as much as the reasons for such violence can be seen, they are under the surface a little more complex and varied. 
The diversity of the Tana Delta is reflected in the people it supports. These communities have taken a slow journey towards intermingling and coexisting with one another. The Pokomo and Orma, for instance, have very different lifestyles and values. The Pokomo who are farmers have historically clashed with the pastoral Orma community, leading to loss of life and destruction of property. The Pokomo community traditionally cultivate along the river, whereas the Orma require access to the river for their livestock. Unfortunately, there are no designated access points to the river, and at times, the livestock have to pass through the farms to access the river. There are conflicts between local pastoralists and pastoralists from outside the delta. The delta is a crucial dry season grazing area, not only for local pastoralists, but for pastoralists from outside. During this season, competition for pasture and water is intense, sometimes leading to open conflicts. They are forced, however, to share and derive their livelihood directly from the ecosystem around them. Sahi tu nategemea delta. Sana sana wakati jua imewaka zaidi na delta akona nyasi, akona maji mzuri na nyasi wakonai. Na wakati delta inajaa maji. Delta inajaa maji. Ayo maji inakuja inatufikia karibu kabisa. Basi wakati hiyo hatuna budi hatuwezi tukategemea delta tunategemea hii ambapo sehemu tunasema ni balo sisi tunasema balo sehemu ambapo tunalima na ni sehemu ambapo tunachunga hiyo sehemu ndio iko na mashamba na irrigation schemes na hizo schemes ni sisi wenyeji hatujapata asilimia bila inatakikana boma kama huu watu wana title ni watu sita peke yake the impact of competition for resources in the area is um, degradation of the delta because understandably the area remains the same is in, not increasing in size a uh, human population is increasing within the delta people are also migrating into the delta and um, coming in with more and more cattle and so you find that competition has actually led to incidents especially between farmers and pastoralists, more so in the dry season. There are already a few large-scale projects in place in this area that have had the effect of alienating land from the communities. Whatever land is left over is also subject to degradation as farmers practice unsustainable farming methods and the grasslands are overgrazed. To find a lasting solution, two things need to be addressed. One, the Orma have to embrace agriculture and diversify their source of livelihood. And the Pokomo need to adapt to modern agricultural techniques.